God bless you and thank you so much for joining us on the program Anointing. I'm Apostle Vincent Takoso of Christ at the International Church. It's a tremendous pleasure to know that you are there and we are, though in the midst of the pandemic lockdown, we are still believing and trusting and hoping together and agreeing by faith for our God to come through for us and end this plague so that we'll be able to return to normal life by his grace. Shall we look unto the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless and glorify you. We thank you in Jesus' name for this great opportunity of worship and fellowship and of the celebration of your majesty and your holiness. Thank you so much in Jesus' name for the moment and the platform, mighty God, and the grace of the time that God Almighty, we know you will foreordain this time, mighty God. For the Bible says in Acts chapter 15, verse 18, that known to God unto eternity are all his works. So this time, mighty God, was known to you. And you purpose this moment in Jesus' name to, Father God, use, utilize this platform to speak words of hope, words of peace and healing and comfort and deliverance and inspiration, especially at this time, mighty God, of great challenges in Jesus' name to a people the world is beset with this COVID-19. We pray in Jesus' name, mighty God, that with your word, mighty God, for nothing was made without your word, that there will be a breakthrough for your glory and for your praise. Come and preside over this moment in Jesus' name by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I thank you in Jesus' name for the great opportunity that we have to come to celebrate our God in the midst of these dark challenges and difficulties that confronts and besets us, we know that in the end, our Christ will prevail in Jesus' mighty holy name. Let us look at the word of God in Zechariah chapter 4. I want us to read from verse 5 to 7. Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah chapter 4, reading from verse 5 to 7. <clears throat> then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to stand on this word of God that is all too familiar with all of you Bible students and believers. The career chapter 4 verse 6 is very much often quoted scripture that many Brothers and sisters, whatever they are going through, difficult challenges, storms in life, they made reference and you know, allusion to it, and God does not disappoint any years. And I believe the time is actually apt that you know this situation that is upon us, the pandemic lockdown and the attendant fear and anxiety, the sense of apprehension and the siege mentality that most people do have. Now even, you know, things have taken a topsy-turvy dive. We are not living in normal times. We are, you know, in abnormal times. Everybody is sitting on tenterhooks. We are at our wits' end, grappling for results and resolution, asking when is it going to end. All aspects and facets of life have been so severely impacted, you know, people do, are not working regular schedules. Everything is mostly virtual right now. The economies of the world have been affected. Our economy here in the United States, the greatest economy in the world, have been so severely impacted. There are people who are waiting for stimulus checks that they have not received. Even yesterday in the news, they have not received nothing and people you know have to pay you know certain 
you know, uh, critical things like their rent, utilities. Students cannot go to school. Parents are home and multi-taxing, you know, working from the house at the same time, homeschooling, and it, it, it's a challenge. You know, things we are, we have been kind of moved from the normal into a new normal that is so difficult trying to adjust everywhere, even in the hospital system, people are even afraid to go and re receive medical care because of the fear that they may be exposed to, the, um, to COVID. Churches are on lockdown. Our church has been on lockdown for months since, since March. You know, the second week of March, we have never had in-person congregational services, and everything is virtual. And there are so many pastors that are struggling. In our case, we have, you know, buildings and property that we have to pay mortgages and things like that. And I say this because there are so many pastors who are going through all these things and they are walking in the soul. Sometimes people are like, you know, where is God in this? Where is God in this? And I'm just going through all these things, the challenges and the battles that comes our way and added to all these in the pressures of making ends meet. Some have lost their jobs. Some have, you know, directly been affected. They have got family members and dear ones, maybe whole families have been affected by the condition and some people tragically has lost dear ones. And it is, it, it is really, really, you know, an excruciating, you know, challenge. And I want to bring God's message of hope in the midst of it all. God's message of hope. Because once upon a time in Bible time, in fact, when we make our allusion from what the Bible says in <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, it says, No temptation has befallen you, except that that is common to man, but God is faithful and just, that with the same temptation he will make a way of escape. So we stand on God's word and then we bring that allusion. We allude to his word in, in, in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, that in the days there was equally a situation like that in the work of the people of faith. And this same God that the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, the same Jesus said yesterday, today, and forever, who was with them? did not come in to rain any, you know, the answers, but they just send a word. May God send a word your way, a word of healing, a word of hope, a word of comfort, a word of peace, a word of inspiration and encouragement. May that be the word. God just send a word. And this is how it's in, because the Bible tells us that there was indeed an obvious discourse between the prophet Zechariah and an angel of God. An angel of God. So there was this discord that was going on. And the angel posed a question to him. Do you understand? Do you know these things? He says no. Because we live in a time that the Bible says in, even in Psalm 78. It says even the prophets do not even understand. Nobody ever thought a day like this will come that a great mighty nation like the United States of America with everything at our beck and call, technology, science, name it, 150,000 American citizens are dead. And this great nation doesn't have the cure. Most nations look up to the United States of America. I was born in a different place and I came here. So I know how America is revered and celebrated. But if this nation doesn't have the key, that means that the world doesn't have a key. Because if the world must have the United States as a world leader in science and technology and advancement, it must have it so that the world can have it. 
And at that time, in this timing, Bible time, it was a situation like that. That God has assigned one man. He wasn't the prophet. He was just an, a man. But he has descended from royalty, from the Davidic line. And he has been made the governor because this indeed is talking about after the 70 year dispersion. So they have come. The post exile, you know, because of their sins, the sins of Israel and the provocation as a, at the time of the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah's prophecy. So they were kind of removing all what happened in Nebuchadnezzar. So this is the post exile group, and he was the leader, Zerubbabel, the first governor of the place. Because they didn't have the royalty then, the monarchy. But he has descended from the Davidic line. So he was the one in charge. But he was in charge of what? Maybe a city like maybe Los Angeles or something. He was in charge of what? Devastation because the place had been destroyed in ruins. Everything has been raised down. And now he is in charge and everybody is looking up to him for answers. And he doesn't have answers. As we know that there are so many people looking up to maybe to the government, to politicians, to some people, they don't have the answers to the scientific community. They are doing their best and God bless them, but they don't have the answers. The great scientific mind, the great you know, intellectuals, the brilliant, name it. These major universities with their major research centers, the great, you know, CDC. Center for Disease Control. Every disease that they have it, they know how to. They've got everything, their, their expertise and the equipment to be able to get, but they don't have the answers. Zerubbabel was embattled. As our governments, as our people in, in government, as people in the scientific community, people know, you know, they are embattled. They are banks against the wall, probing for answers and results because they themselves even have to protect themselves against this COVID menace. Everybody is a candidate. I have often made allusions that it doesn't matter your zip code, it doesn't matter how high your wall is. If this COVID can find its way to Beckingham Palace, if he can find his way to Elysee Palace in France, if he can find his way to the White House and attack the National Security Chief, if he can find his way even to Spain, to the palace, even find his way to the Kremlin and attack people over there, people in senior you know, ministry, uh, uh, in, uh, in cabinet positions over there, if he can find his way, to Canada to attack the Prime Minister's wife. If he can find his way to number 10 Downing Street in the UK and attack the Prime Minister. Then what about those ordinary Joes? People, these are people who have got the best protection, the best medical attention, the best security, the best, and then their walls were not high enough to prevent COVID from getting in there. So we have to leave, but they themselves are embattled as Zerubbabel. So many people, there's a time of great, great crisis, acute kind of crisis, and he was embattled, and he doesn't have the answers, and people are looking up to him to bring the answers, but he doesn't have it. So in the midst of this challenge, that is why God this is the discourse between a prophet, Zechariah, who should maybe prophesy, and even the prophets, and them, we don't have the answers. Only God has it through Jesus Christ. So the angel comes and then gives a word. Didn't give a kill, gives a word. Because when God speaks, God declares the solution.
It is up to us to receive what God has declared by faith and adhere and comply so that we see the results. So he gives a word. Do you understand? The prophet said, no. I am clueless. I don't have an idea of what this is going, what is going on here. Do you know this? He said, no. No one knows but God. Deuteronomy 29, 29. For the secret things belongs to God. Doesn't belong to anybody. So please, please, please do not buy into people's, you know, who are taking advantage of people's fear, people's the sense of panic. And the pandemonium that is going on out there and peddling falsehood and interjecting their own insertions and you know deliberately contrived assertions. It shows nothing but the word of God. For only one word from God is needed as this time he is sent to declare a word as thou sayest the Lord. The word. He made the world. Jeremiah 32, 17, our Lord God. Thou hast made the world, the whole world, by thy outstretched arm. One word from God. God spoke all things in creation into existence. What we need is a word. A word that we are ready to comply by, to live by, to embrace and to accept and to put into practice faithfully and obediently. So we need him to speak because we are heard speeches from men, from all kinds of, from politicians, from scientists, from where we heard speeches, but it still hasn't worked. We may even have gotten certain prophecies and it hasn't worked, but we are waiting by because God is not in it. But this time an angel is speaking to a human prophet. And the human prophet who is supposed to know it all has seen greater things before. But this I say this time is <laughs> beyond my pay grade. And the angel said, this is the message. Go tell Zerubbabel, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit. You are not going to need human help. You are not going to need, it is going to be done by my spirit, the Holy Spirit. Thus saith the Lord. And this is the time for the church to pray, for the Holy Ghost to invite, invite the Spirit of God to intervene. For the Bible says where the Spirit of God is, there is a liberty. And liberty is what Christ died for. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, freedom is what you have. Christ has set you free, stand firm, so that the yoke of bondage is not placed on you anymore. He declared on the cross, it is finished. Colossians chapter 2, 10 to 15 tells us that every ordinance and regulations and rules that stood, that was contrary to us, that stood in opposition to us, Jesus blotted with his blood and nailed on the cross, and then he made the public spectacle. He disarmed our enemies and made the public spectacle of them. This is about us. Judicially, this is where we are supposed to be enjoying this. But the thing is, yes, there are laws in the books that guarantee people's freedom, but people's choices can make them live outside the freedoms that the Constitution even guaranteed them because of certain choices that they made. Whilst some people are enjoying the freedom because they are law-abiding, some can be living outside it because they are not law-abiding. And that is it. When we are, we are word abiding, we will enjoy the blessings uh, and that, that is inherent in the spoken word. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. COVID is not by might, not human might, not human ingenuity, not human excellence, not anything, but by the Spirit of God, COVID will be taken care of. The Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Bible says, in Acts 10.38, 
how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and he went about doing good, healing all, healing all who were oppressed, oppressed by the enemy. Because God was with him. Now you see, how God anointed his only begotten son with the Holy Spirit and he healed all. Only Christ can heal all, cure all, deliver all, bless all, prosper all, contain all, free all from the menace of COVID. In Jesus' name. And not only that, any other sicknesses and diseases that is labeled incurable, that has plagued our world, anything that is adding to the fear and the confusion and the sense of anxiety that is there. So now there are churches, mega churches, empty chairs. Strange, I speak to empty chairs all the time. Even in this studio, the chairs are empty. I don't have anybody here. I'm just here by myself. But thank God I speak with a comforting assurance that you are out there listening to me. Praise God. So my, doing, my job here, I'm doing it by faith because by faith I know there's a daughter of God, there's a son of God out there receiving this message. Not by might, not by power, by my spirit. And then goes on to say, this mountain, the mountain is a symbol of opposition because we see in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 to 5, the prophet Isaiah declared, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Declare to Judah that your battle has ended. And then he goes, a mountain should be made, no valley should be filled. Not that some dynamite is coming or some could hit the mountains, no. But God has spoken. The mountain by themselves must be low. And the valleys by themselves will fill themselves up. So we are praying in the name of Jesus and I declare this. I just stand here as God, as, as an echo chamber of the Holy Spirit. That this mountain, the mountain of opposition, standing in, you know, in resisting opposition to the perfect will and plan and purposes of God, will yield and make way in Jesus' name for the prevailing grace inherent and contained in the word of God. For all of us, the freedom will come into our world. We will now be able to breathe an air of peace and ease and not live in fear anymore. Fear wasn't the prescription of God. Fear is the prescription of the enemy. Because fear, fearful people are vulnerable people. And vulnerable people make desperate decisions without discernment. That's why God frees us from fear. So that when we are settled, we can make prudent choices, relaxed, guided by the Holy Spirit. Then we can get God's, you know, God can get our attention and vice versa. As I wind up my brothers and sisters, I pray in Jesus' name that on the strength of this word, I pray in Jesus' name wherever you are, as God's word has come forth. God's word came in the time of great challenge, great crisis. And it was believed and received. Let us take this. Because this is not man talking to man. This is God's angel speaking to man. Let us receive the word of the angel of God in Jesus name. As speaking to us. It was in Zerubbabel's time. But this is our time. That this battle is not by might. It's not by power. But by the spirit of God. Therefore we pray for the Holy Spirit to come and take control in Jesus' name. May God forgive us all our sinful choices, our stubborn, disobedient choices, our sinful career that has occasioned this crisis upon us. We pray in Jesus and God forgive us all the provocations and then intervene by his spirit as he did in the days when King, King David in 2 Samuel 20, chapter 24, verse 25, the Bible says, When David prayed, God heard him. And he ended the plague. May God hear us and end this plague. And also, Father God, touch your people. Anyone who is affected and afflicted in any way, Jesus, I pray healing. I pray a miracle. 
I pray God's grace upon you. I pray God's major mighty breakthrough upon your life. Any seed, any kind of challenge that you are going through, may God lift it up over you. I pray in Jesus' name, may this word come to you as God's angel speaking to you instead of Zerubbabel. May his grace and mercy rest upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you, brother, sister, and remain blessed. Until next week, this is the anointing in Apostle Vincent, a course of Christ at the International Church. Please, if this ministry is being a blessing unto you, we want the feedback from you. Please call the number on the screen and let us know how you are being blessed. God bless you and stay blessed till next week.